Hey guys, welcome back to Daddyless Daughters, season one, episode two. So today's guest is actually my sister, my sister Nia. And I thought, what better way to talk about Daddyless Daughters with, with than with another daddyless daughter. Who's actually my sister. We say we <laughs> share the same dad. I'm like, duh. Or we don't share the same dad because we're daddyless. Girl. That's Nia. That you're gonna get to see a lot of her personality in this video. Okay? So basically, we're gonna get started on um the views, how it was growing up, how it affected us growing up and what we're doing now to fix it so i'm gonna ask my sister how do you feel and i really want you to like really answer the question like how do you feel that growing up without a dad in your life really affected you i two things mm -hmm. well like cause and effect i think it made me feel less than mm -hmm. um to me there was always like a lesser value attached to people that didn't have a two-parent household mm. like yo, you have a mom and a dad that yeah. just sounds like a such a foreign concept to me that yeah. like if one parent can't get you the other parent comes to get you mm -hmm. so it definitely made me feel less than especially because i went to a lot of different music like prestigious music programs mm -hmm. and um academic programs where the kids their parents were involved both of their parents so it was kind of weird like damn where's my parents at yeah yeah it definitely it made me feel less than and it caused me to always overcompensate and constantly need outside validation from everyone else because i was feeling like if i just do this little bit extra then he'll want to be involved. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he never did, it always felt like it's never enough. So you spend a life of overcompensating. Yeah. And as a kid, that's like, as a kid that actually has a negative effect. In, in adulthood, it could actually benefit you overcompensating, even though it has its detriment. But as a kid, it's especially a bit more detrimental because... I would do the overcompensating thing like in school yeah, with my teachers and then other kids look at you as a teacher's pet. And then now you're not only an outcast of what you feel like at home, but you're mm -hmm. an outcast in school. Yeah, I feel that. For me, it was like, well, in the beginning, you know, he was in and out, mm -hmm. right? So I feel like when he like really stopped coming around, I feel like that's when it affected me the most. And when I was growing up, I was like, you know what? It don't bother me. It didn't bother, like, I would say that it didn't bother me until I got older. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, oh, shit. Because it started showing up in my relationships. So I started, I did unintentionally I was doing this. I was dating guys that mimicked the way my dad treated me. So, like, do you feel like you dated guys that abandoned you? abandoned me feel like you were on eggshells in the relationship that and also being emotionally unavailable yeah so i dated a lot of unemotionally unemotionally attached guys mm -hmm. so my overcompensation came in the relationship of doing the most like if i give him this if i like okay let's just get deep like you know like you really don't want to, let's say, have sex with somebody, but then it's like, you cut you into it. Yeah, but you, because you might, you think in your head, like, nah, he's talking to other girls, so you feel like you got to do more right. so that you can outshine that girl. But really, what you're doing is you just like her. Yeah. And that's what I was doing. I'm like, and I didn't realize that until I really turned like 27. So last wow. year, I realized that in my very last relationship, like we were we were arguing about something and he did this laugh that my dad does and i was like oh shit i'm doing it again and that's when i knew like i had to get out of the relationship because i did the same exact thing i barely even knew this dude and we living together and you know it was it was bad it just it just really went bad and it took me at that very moment to realize that i need to really do some work on myself 
-hmm. Like, stop, like, instead of doing the work, like, I would go from relationship to relationship thinking that being with a different dude was going to change something. And then I would always be forcing them to do more when it was really me who had to fix me. Yeah. And I was like, that's when I, it, it, it hit. And I'm like, okay, so I need to stop being, I just felt clingy. Like, I was just, like, he can treat me the worst. And I would just still be like, you know what? It's okay. It's all right because I want to make it work, you know? I want to make it to where he's going to love me if I stick around. So years would go by and... Can we talk about... Can I... Can we get, like, even deeper? Yeah. Can we, like... I know... We're not exposing each other. Yeah. Either, you guys. But we really want to get to the root of the problem. Yeah. Part of this podcast is for... It's an opportunity for us to get closer. And, and find the root of the problem. Right. And mend our relationship. But, like... So she just mentioned how she would overcompensate and then no matter what they did, she would still be wanting to work on the relationship. Mm -hmm. That's something that was hard in our relationship because I would feel like as we were growing our sisterhood, mm -hmm. she wouldn't give me as many chances. It's different with Mia. It's different with you. Okay. Because with, with like outside of romantic, it was just... I felt like you would do things purposely mm -hmm. to like antagonize me. And then I, but then when I think of it now, I don't think it was purposeful, but at the time I thought you were doing it on purpose. Yeah. But that's why I say like, it really helped that you came here and we got to know each other yeah. more in person because I wasn't doing things purposefully. It mm -hmm. was a reaction of my mind overreacting. Mm -hmm. And then now we're bouncing off of each other in a negative way. Yeah. And then it's just miscommunication after miscommunication. Yeah. But later on, I understood like how different of our lives we live. Like, mm. so our dad, I mean, we won't go too into it, but like our dad had both of our moms mm -hmm. at the same time. My mom went off to have a bunch of girls and her mom went off to have a bunch of boys. So the way that we were, the way that we were raised was already different from that. Yeah. And then on top of it, just to get even more deep, I was exposed more to my dad's anger and violence towards my mom. She doesn't have that same experience with him. You know, he mm. was, he was still the aloof, like, uh, what do you call it? Like not really present father figure. But he wasn't particularly violent towards your mom. No. I think. But he was really violent towards my mom. So I think that also affected the way that we dealt with things. And mm -hmm. she, I feel like she always had like a stronger approach. Because I was strong to the outside world. She was strong to everybody. You know what I mean? Like she was able to kind of manage her emotions and act like it didn't really affect her. I was I was broken into pieces. Yeah, I think I it's because really I grew affected. up with boys. Yeah. With the with having all brothers kind of makes you like a boy. And we do share a brother. Yeah. But they have the same we all have the same dad and they have the same mom and dad. So they grew up primarily together. Yeah, it's like I would like to ha well, he wouldn't be a daughter, but I would like to know how like it affected him because but as Not, a man, it feels like he'll never say. Yeah, but because you can you can see it on him that it affects him. But the point the point of this is like to just really try to figure out like what is the root. But I feel like with us, it's like we were warring with each other, but it's like we're going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's when I just came to the conclusion, like, why am I arguing with her? Like But I think that's the reason we were arguing is because for Dazara, it was more like <laughs> Oh my God, like, I just got to move past this. I, I can't just keep, I can't keep thinking about it. I just got to blah, blah, blah. I just got to move on. To me, it was like, I have been holding this. I need to get it out. You know what I'm saying? But you I would never do it. it. Nia but has... I got it out at the last minute when I finally exploded about some shit that was totally unrelated. Yeah, it took her, I remember when I first moved to Atlanta, I was like, let's talk about it. And she was like, nah. <laughs> and I was like, I tried for years, like, bro, we just have to, like, we got to figure this out. And how long did it take? I think this was, like, maybe, like, the first time in, like, four years. Well, I would say we also got to talk about it 
in Jamaica. And we also got to talk about it when you first moved into your place, like when we finally split up in Which Thailand. Way? Like when you got your own place and I finally got my own place, we were able to talk about it again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is going to, the thing, the reason why, like, this is going to be special, this podcast, I mean, I'm not sure if I'll be on here more, but this is an opportunity to delve deeper than we really ever have before. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's definitely going to be a different experience. I don't really, yeah, it's going to be different. I just, so we we kind of, like, talked about, the background the background of it right so in present in present day how would you say that it's affecting you because now it's suppressed how old are you 26 26 i'll be 27 in may yeah so it's at this point like you heard her just say of what it was at this point so for 26 years of this suppressed trauma how is it affecting you romantically how is it affecting you just individually and like what is your outlook on life now when it when it comes to men or like yeah like when it comes to men and when it comes to like you moving Mm. forward let me just say that i went through stages i literally Mm -hmm. went through stages of grief because not having my dad was it I did grieve that and I I think I am still grieving that because even like moments like dating someone new and wanting to have a father to vet this person like wanting to have a father to to be like who is this guy where do you know him from I'm gonna be watching him Mm -hmm. let him know that you got a father that'll pull up on a real quick yeah and I don't have that so I, I am still grieving his loss, mm-hmm. you know, of him being gone. But I went through denial. Yeah. Denial at first because in that stage of denial was like blaming my mother for everything. Like, even though it was obviously him, my mom was there, so she took the brunt of it all. Mm-hmm. So it was denial. Then it was anger. Then after anger, I tried to suppress it and just fill my life with a bunch of things. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And act like it didn't phase me. Mm-hmm. And then when I got into my 20s and I wanted to have meaningful relationships, but I didn't know how, I became frustrated and I became angry again. At this point in my life, I think I have a bit of sadness mixed with a bit of like, I'm just resigned because I've had a conversation a couple years ago with my dad. And it's actually, it's so crazy, like the different perspectives, because I think you still talk to him. She's like, you know, she's in the point where she's like, you know what? He's going to be who he is. Cool. But he did something to me that rubbed me the wrong way. He lied about something that I just felt like was a general thing. That He's been lying to me forever. But it's like, he, to me, he lied about where he lived. And I like tried to send him a gift and it didn't make it there. It bounced back and they told me that the address was not valid. And then when I asked him why he didn't tell me the truth, he basically said, stop looking for me to be in your life that way. Like unless you send him i think he said something along the lines of unless you send me naked bitches you don't need to know where i live right. and in my head i'm just thinking like you're my dad like yeah don't you want to be you know what i'm saying i've tried to be the greatest woman in every aspect of the word mm-hmm. and it's still not enough it's never going to be enough so i think now i'm at the point of sadness but instead of before choosing partners that were totally wrong for me that emulated everything that he was as i'm trying to heal i'm trying to be more mindful of a couple things that one peace is not boredom you know that i used to think that yeah if you're in an overly peaceful environment there's no drama it feels boring because you're used to chaos yeah so i've i learned to like check myself now like nia you don't have to be doing something or occupying the space with something for it to be something Mm -hmm. in your relationships. And the second thing is I'm actively trying to choose partners. Like I'm vetting my partners because I want to give, I don't know if I'm gonna have children, but if I have kids, I would like to give them the best outcome possible. Mm -hmm. So I would love for them to experience a family that is really nothing like my family. And hopefully we can bring a family together. And then I have my mom and my sisters that want to go to therapy. They want to heal. So it's like, 
I'm tr I'm being more intentional yeah. about doing the opposite of yeah. what I was already doing because that didn't get me anywhere. Mm -hmm. Basically, I I'm gonna get that. some wine. Okay, I feel that for me at this stage, I feel like I've been doing the work. I've been really like not hiding from the pain not not um what am i trying to say i hate when i stumble over my words like i really am at the point now where it's like you can't continue to blame your father not being there for you being this way or or continuing the same pattern that you've been doing your whole life if that makes sense does that make sense I get that you can't blame him, but I'm still angry. But it's like you can't be angry forever because it's it's just at the point now where it's like we know that he's not going to be what we want him to be. And and I think about this often, like the day that he gets called home, right? How will well am I going to be sad or am I going to be angry or am i just going to be numb i thought about that like i don't really know i think it'll be sadness because you lost a parent and it's like damn i didn't get a chance to have that relationship with my dad that i've always wanted i mean you well, know what is the difference i try don't call don't check in don't yeah say happy birthday let me just tell y'all this like dad if you ever hear this mm -hmm. like i'm just saying what the truth is you know when my grandmother died, it's not her grandmother, it's my, my mom's mom. Mm -hmm. When she died, like I begged him to come to the funeral, okay? Mm -hmm. He came. When he arrived, I was across the street getting beef patties. I was mm -hmm. in the, we had the funeral in the Bronx. I went across the street to get beef patties and mm -hmm. he came into the funeral home and he didn't see me. So then he left. So my mom was like, well, he was just here. And I called him, I'm like, where are you at? He's like, well, I left because I didn't see you. I'm like, you knew I was gonna, it's just like, yeah. it's just like a lack of, like, you just don't know he give a that. fuck. Yeah. You just don't care. And he did come back and he stayed for a second and we talked, but it just doesn't feel like. Genuine. Yeah, it doesn't feel genuine. We don't have a connection. Yeah. The only connection is like, when I look at him, I'm like, damn, like. She looks just look like him. just like him. And that's even harder. It's not like I could forget. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't look nothing like that nigga. It right. doesn't matter. I look just like you. Yeah. So it's like when I see him, I do have like a, it's so weird. I have like a little, let me tell you that something. That little girl do you remember feeling. This? Do you remember when he used to say he was going to pick us up? And he would pick us up, mm -hmm. you know, most of the time. But he would be late. All the time. Late. And you would, I would wait. Like, you know how you, you set up your, your clothes, your Jordans for dress down mm -hmm. Friday at school? I would have on my freshest fit and I would just sit up straight in front of the TV waiting and waiting and waiting and the hours would pass and pass and pass and he would come and I was still excited mm -hmm. but I was like I've been waiting all day yeah. for you and then I just I still get that feeling like yeah. I it's almost like he's gonna come one day yeah like I, I feel excited that too to see him but then it, it is met with disappointment because where you been all the time me. like you know it's just not like should. a loving dad yeah, you know, I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm going to tell you something. This is going to be the first time she probably ever heard this. But when we were younger, I used to really hate my sister. Oh, I know. They used to beat me. They used to beat no, me. No, but listen, it was like, this is why. Because first of all, I've always wanted a sister. I hated the fact that I've always had it brothers. Because they don't get it. Like, you're a girl, whatever. I'm the only girl of three boys. But anyway... I always wanted a sister. And then I get a chance to finally get a sister, right? And I just feel like, I don't know if this was intentional, but I feel like since we were younger, he put us against each other. Yeah. I feel that. And and when it was my birthday, he would buy her stuff on my birthday. And then on her birthday, she'll still get something for her birthday. And I don't get nothing on her birthday. So I remember on my birthday, he bought her a bunny. I was like... But it's my birthday. And then from there, I was like, I don't like her. I mean, I, hate but I her. always thought, like, why Why was you beating on my mom? Maybe he was overcompensating for what he knew he was doing 
to us emotionally. He yeah. showed up more for y'all. Not really. He really didn't. Like that's the thing. Like you, you he feel that, far, but he, he went really far didn't. Has to kidnap you. But he was doing that because I don't want to really put my family, you know. But it was something that was going on with him and my mom. So he was trying to spite my mom. That's why. Like that's why that happened. Not because I love my kids. Give me my kids. I want them. He was trying to spite my mom because my mom found out about your mom. Mm. That's what happened. So it wasn't that he was overcompensating like oh desire let me no first of all i'm the middle child right so it's javon it's me and then it's nia so she's the baby of my dad and then for I'm my the mom middle of my mom i'm the i'm the baby for my mom <laughs> so with my mom it was different like my mom tried to do the best and tried to be both you know dad and mom because it was the same thing for my other brothers but I just like this relationship. Like they still talk to their dad, so that's why it's weird for me to like. Damn, they even got their dad, and I'm sitting up here. So when I when I've accepted him, like or like try to accept him back, and like try to like build a relationship, it don't feel the same. It feels like a boyfriend whose attention I'm trying to get. Yeah, that's what it feels yeah. like, and it's like he he'll answer. Oh hey, how's it going? Like he'll send birthday texts, but it just be. Dry. yeah and it doesn't make me feel like excited like i feel how you feel like one day he's just gonna be like you know what i'm tired of being a deadbeat i'm gonna be in your life do y'all get tired of being deadbeats if a deadbeat is watching yeah like are you here because you you know that your daughter is a daddyless daughter and you know you need to step up because i will tell you this as disappointed as i am that you're not in your child's life if you are here right now looking for this reason mm -hmm. i appreciate that you're at trying least trying to do something to make it better mm -hmm. because as a daughter we still care about you we still love you yeah we're mad at you but we're mad at you because we just want you to be there mm -hmm. so if you have a younger daughter like there is time. If you think there's not time to turn it around, yeah. there is time to turn it Cause around. Because we're still She's young. Waiting. Yeah. yeah it, we're still young. I'm 27 young. and I still wish that it could get turned around or I'll be 27. I feel like that's why I don't want to have kids. Kids are a big responsibility, but I don't want to fuck up a human's life. Like, yeah. A person. Because it's like if what I'm what I've realized is if you don't heal from the trauma, your kids will repeat the same cycle. Yeah. And I I really I'm so big on like if I'm if I'm getting in a relationship and it's not geared towards marriage, I cannot be I cannot be with you. Like And I'm the opposite. I'm like, I don't know about the marriage thing. No, I, I need the foundation for me. I and here I am running like I will be dead in love with you and I might say no to marriage. I'm that scared. I'm that scared. Really? Yeah, I am. I don't feel that. I feel like that it sets the foundation. Like, of course, like man, people always they they throw the well, marriage could be it could go wrong too. He can cheat on you, but uh, when if you if you do it right and 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 but then I feel like it's hard because it's like if if you're trying to compensate of your dad not being there and then you're trying to not pick somebody like your dad, I think like you'll unintentionally just end up doing it. Anyway, or you end up picking someone that is really not your type and settling. That's what bothers me. I'm I, I'm just it's just really hard. Be and it's like I wonder if if y'all feel the same way, daddyless daughters, and you feel like damn, I I want to get to the point where I can just like get past it. It's one of the hardest things. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care if somebody be like, oh, I've grown past that. It, I'm, I'm done. But I don't think it's something that you just get over. Because you got your mom in your life, right? And you tell your mom all the things that happens. But to have a male figure in your life that you can trust and you that you, you came from. Yeah. He knows what's right for you. Like, he knows what a man wants because he is a man. You know, he knows what to look for. Like, no, he's full of shit. Your dad's supposed to be your first love. Yeah. Right? As a daughter, like... And for me, it was really hard. It, it, I don't know. I feel like when I was younger, I dealt with the middle child syndrome. And then as as I just got older, I just feel like it got worse. Mm. So I, I really, I don't know. Like, how do you heal from that? Go to therapy. Gots to go to therapy. Do you think therapy will work? I think, yeah. I mean, I think therapy will help in a major way because... 
I saw this meme that was like a woman's mind or just anybody's mind. Mm -hmm. Let's, it's a bunch of yarn, all different colors, all intertwined, knots in it and everything. All the therapist does is sees all the colors in your mind and neatly rolls each yarn color up into the ball that it belongs in. They help you compartmentalize so that you can handle each problem as they come and you can have sort of like a not really a programmed response but a practice response mm -hmm. and like even communication like practice makes perfect so yeah. they give you things to work on that are small so that it doesn't feel overwhelming like oh my god i gotta heal from all this shit right yeah. now they just give you slow things like okay y'all can't do that clearly y'all can't talk about this let's just yeah. let's just punt that for now let's just focus on letting each other speak one at a time. Mm -hmm. Let's just, you know what I mean. So yeah, that was a I good definitely analogy. think I definitely think therapists can help. Honestly, I I would I would look into therapy. I think I'm in a good space right now. I think mentally for myself, because I had to heal the little girl in me first before I I even tackled the daddy problem. I feel like that's what happened for me. So the little girl in me was just so broken from everything that's happened to me like when i tell you all of the things that happened i'm talking i'm talking from we'll dive in on later podcasts yeah i'm everything that happened and that took me years like it i think i think it's a constant learning curve all the time like you're always learning but i feel like i'm at the i'm at the the point of the roller coaster before you just go ah like I'm like right there. You've been like I'm prepping. Yeah, it's I'm like prepping, I'm prepping. So, oh god, that's good. So I feel like we can end it on that note because I would like to come back with an update. I was telling her like I want this to be like we speak about what the issues are for like people who can like resonate with you know. Damn, I'm at that point too with my sister or like I'm just doing that with my dad or your mom or you know whatever you're less of and check back in and see like where you are like could be in the same space and remember <laughs> joke to cope <laughs> if you don't have a daddy get a zaddy <laughs> if you don't heal who will <laughs> i swear <laughs> on that note you guys thank you guys for tuning in yes. and we will have a part two update coming soon Bye. Bye, Bye daddyless daughters. <laughs> <laughs>